International correspondent Sarah Coates has more now on the attack from Tel Aviv. Nothing official yet from the Israelis, but it is important to point out that it is not Israel's policy to comment on such incidents. Now, one person we have heard from, though, is the far-right National Security Minister Itamar ben Gavir. He's been slammed here in Israel for a tweet that he put out in the wake of this attack in Iran. It translates from Hebrew to English to lame. Now, the opposition leader, Lapid, he is slamming Ben Gavir. He says, never before has a minister in the security cabinet done such heavy damage to the country's security, to its image and to its international standing. Now, we have heard from the IDF. It came out shortly after to say that the advice to the public hasn't changed that it remains the same. And really, here on the ground, uh, you would not even know that something like this has happened. It's quite warm here. The beaches are packed. People are out uh, walking their dogs, visiting cafes. And it really is business as usual. And it is fairly uh, a stark contrast when you look at today and when you look at last Friday, before this unprecedented missile and drone attack on Israel, Last Friday, shops were crowded. People were out panic buying things like generators. They were withdrawing large sums of money and they were stockpiling food and water. Sarah Coates, Scripps News, Tel Aviv. All right, Sarah, thank you. Joining us to discuss what may come next from a military standpoint is retired Brigadier General Peter Zwack. He's a Scripps News military analyst and a global fellow at the Kennan Institute at the Wilson Center. Always appreciate having you on the show, General. Now that Israel has responded in a way that left Iran signaling that it will not retaliate, what does this mean for the conflict and the rest of the world? Uh, I think your question um, hits the... Um fundamental uh, point um, and um, Israel it looks like now this can develop lengths uh, that it has uh, taken a uh, relatively restrained counteraction and what was uh, really interesting to me and others was that uh, in the immediate hours days after the uh, after the uh, big 300 uh, missile drone attack just a week ago, can you believe it just a week ago, that um, Israel took a measured approach and they did not launch reactively. And so it looks like they really, really thought this through and gone back and forth in their war cabinet. They have, I believe, tapped the Iranians on, the, on their shoulders, saying, here is our capability. We can penetrate your, uh, your air defense um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we can do. The fact that uh, the uh, strikes were um, in, in and around Isfahan, their third largest city in Iran, um, uh, where there is also a, 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 a nuclear processing plant, um, and Natanz, another big one, is not far away, I think says a lot. And it was, a, I think, a, a measure, and now it gives a chance for both sides to back off because Iran was not heavily battered and, Iran, and Israel showed almost with impunity that they could get inside. So we're going to have to see how this plays out. And uh, I mean, it can go much more, um, um, but maybe fingers crossed, both sides have now, you know, gotten their, uh, gotten their points in and may back off in the near term. Other point, is that let's see what happens with the Iranian proxies, especially Hezbollah, um, that that uh, surround Israel. Hezbollah and still a little bit of Hamas and, and of course, uh, the Houthis down in um, the Red Sea. Just a few weeks ago, we were talking about how um, the cracks in the foundation in the relationship between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Biden were becoming more and more evident as it seemed that Netanyahu wasn't necessarily heeding the administration's um, suggestions and warnings. Now that he has shown that kind of restraint that you were just discussing, what does that tell you, if anything, about the relationship um, now and moving forward? Because Biden recently said that, okay, well, if 
we will pull this the, the resources that we have. Um, did that is that what spurred this kind of okay? We'll listen at this point. Well, I, I, again, I think um, this is a multi-headed hydra, and for now, the missile drone and drone uh, strike and counter strike we'll have to see where that goes i think now we have to look and see what happens with rafa in gaza there are multiple things going on here and uh, the israelis have kind of gone back and forth uh if they were going to uh, it looked like for a while they were going to pull back not pull back but back off on uh, doing a major uh clearing operation rafa uh that's back on the plate and um, maybe if Israel is, is getting a positive international, if you will, um, reaction by not being uh, uh, completely hard-headed on the counter-strike, then maybe the Israelis have some play with Rafa. Bottom line, the Israelis uh, believe that, uh, that uh, Hamas has got to go. How that is done um, um, is the big question. And unfortunately, Hamas has burrowed itself heavily uh, in the middle of a million um, uh, uh, Palestinian uh, people. General, I want to go back to something you said earlier, that this attack by Israel was in the vicinity of a nuclear site in Iran. Uh, we know the Iran nuclear deal. They've kind of backed off that. There's been so much concern about them bulking up their nuclear program again. What type of message is Israel trying to send, if any, by attacking at that point? Another great question. Um, I would say that, um, uh, again, I go back to their tapping the Iranians on the shoulder. We can come after you. We can take, uh, take your sights. Now, some of the uh, uh, Iranian uh, nuclear sites or production sites are quite deeply um, um, embedded. But there are others, the processing areas and all that, that are fairly vulnerable. The bottom line, if the fact that it was near Iranian nuclear um, uh, processing facilities was, I think, highly significant um, and would be its kind of potentially the next step on the escalatory ladder, I think we take a deep breath that they didn't do it this time. Iran, it's your move, and the best move is no move. All right, retired Brigadier General Peter Zwack, always good to see you. Thank you for coming on the show.